Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Anna Mae and today I'm going to be making a video about how I care for very long hair. Um, people's definition of having very long hair is different. Uh, yes, my hair. So I have quite a bit of hair in my opinion um, and I've had long hair for quite a while now. So I decided I would make this video. I used to look up stuff like this all the time. Um, when I was trying to grow my hair out healthier and yeah I will just get into how I care for it, how I grew my hair this long and everything like that. So the first few things I do want to address are like little FAQs. Um, this is not my natural hair texture, I have naturally wavy hair. I will probably be inserting a lot of photos in this video because I don't have physical things with me and I can't just magic my hair back to waviness. But I straighten my hair sometimes, I curl it sometimes because I have naturally very unruly wavy hair, very dry hair and um, it's also quite fine. So just so you know about my natural hair texture, I do not have thick hair. This is literally all of my hair put together. So that's something that sometimes works my benefit, sometimes works against me. Uh, another question is, is this my natural colour? And no. Um, it is up until about here-ish where you can see the highlights kind of starting. I had balayage about two years ago and I'm getting it done in like four days. So excited. So that's why I thought I would make this video before I have to get lots of hair cut off because I bleach it again. But yeah, this is also if you have your hair color treated, most of these things will work for you as well as far as growing out your hair because especially bleaching does damage your hair and my hair is super fine. But the roots are all natural. I've never uh, colored or bleached up at the top of my head. As far as how long I've been growing it for, I don't have an exact date when I was like, I'm gonna grow my hair super long. I always had long hair, even when I was little. When a lot, a lot of kids have like little bobs, I never had really short hair because my hair was too fine and too unruly. It was just curly everywhere. So um, it just wouldn't work if my mom got it any shorter. Uh, also, I was bald for a solid like two and a half years. So when I grew hair, everyone was pretty excited. And um, yeah, I've had, my hair was to about here, I'd say, when I was maybe 12. And then it got cut to maybe here again when I was 15 or 16. But that's really it. Um, I've always had very long hair. It's really maintaining the length that can be difficult. So starting right into the tips that I have for growing out your hair. And the first thing you'll always hear is don't overwash your hair, don't overwash your hair, your hair will dry out and go crazy and blah 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 blah. I would actually suggest washing your hair every second day. Um, I think, you know, every three days if that works for you, if your hair is naturally very dry. I have very oily roots naturally, but really dry ends. And honestly, I find my hair gets so dry if I don't wash it and put in conditioners and put in oils. Um, every other day and my scalp just does not react well to not being shampooed basically every other day. So, you know, one of the, I will always say one of the best times my hair was so, so long, I was actually washing it every day. So that's just thing. It's really good to like, gen, like massage your head because it'll help your hair grow. Um, exercise as well does help your hair grow. That's just from that time in my life. I always had my hair tied up. I was exercising every day and that's why I was showering every day. So there are things that help your hair to grow. But definitely as far as washing, don't freak out if you feel like you need to wash your hair every other day or even every day. It is not the worst thing in the world. And I know a lot of people will disagree, but that's how I've worked it out, I'm fine. My hair is still pretty long and I wash my hair very often, so it's fine. So as far as what you wash your hair with, um, this is something that is super, super important and it differs with different hair types. But I, as I said, will insert pictures of my natural hair if I hadn't done that already. Um, so basically, they always say that a frizz is just a curl reaching out for moisture. So I use a lot of moisturizing products, but you have to be so, so careful with what you use because silicone is the enemy. If you take anything from this video, silicone is the enemy. Number one for me, it makes my scalp break out. Um, I have very acne prone skin, so I don't use anything with silicone in it, but um, do not put it in your hair. It will clog up the, what are the little things called in your hair? Like the little the holds and it will not allow any other moisture to get into your hair. So for some people 
you know, it doesn't cause any problems, but when your hair is as fine and as porous as mine, because it is both naturally light and bleached, it will just cause a lot of problems. So always avoid it. I will put maybe a list here if I can figure out how to insert it. I only use iMovie, so I really find it hard to insert things. Or else there'll be a list down below of uh, products or names that silicones go under, but for me, definite no but you definitely need oil and moisture so products i use i have some stuff here the shampoo and conditioner that i now swear by you know with color treated hair my hair has been growing so much better in the last like six or seven months and i've been using this brand called insight if i can link it down below i will i got it um in a local pharmacy and at the time i thought i paid way too much money for it but i honestly didn't this is 500 milliliters of shampoo this is the conditioner actually um, and usually I go through a lot more conditioner, but I didn't in this case. And yeah, it was 10 euro per bottle. I also have the shampoo here. I use the damaged hair shampoo, which I would definitely get again, and the dry hair conditioner. And they are amazing, uh, very natural products. I do think the conditioner has a bit of silicone, if I... Um, no, maybe it doesn't. Oh, it does, yeah, right at the some of the last ingredients, but it's fine. Um, something that I do as a mask all the time is almond oil. I bought this for four euro, it's 200 milliliters. Literally, I can still see the price sticker on the back. And I've used this maybe three or four times and I just leave it in my hair. Sometimes I put a hair, hair dryer over my hair to heat it up. And you leave it in as a mask to moisturize or you can just rub some in after you wash your hair. Amazing, super natural and it doesn't have silicone in it because it is just straight up oil. You can do that with other oils. I know people use coconut oil. I just don't put it at my roots obviously, but I have found using almond oil is amazing. As well as that, there's a brand called Lovea, and if I can get my hands on one of those masks, I definitely will. I'll actually use it like twice in one of those sachets, but um, I'll try and link that down below. I found it really hard to find it online, but I'll write it down anyways. If you're looking for, you know, a shampoo that maybe has a bit more suds in it because those don't lather a whole lot uh, i would definitely suggest the herbal essences zero percent and they seem to have some n new really nice looking ones but i have found that some of the zero percent herbal essences i will insert a picture here um of the ones i've used like the pink one and the yellow one whatever they are one's chamomile one's rose maybe uh, the shampoos and the conditioners are also really good for that and they're super affordable so they'd be also shampoos I would definitely suggest. So as far as like brushing your hair, that is also a big thing. People always say, do not brush your hair when it's wet. I only brush my hair when it's wet. Um, I know that people are probably like gasping. I, again, I have really wavy hair, so I'll brush it like if it's straightened, I'll brush it when it's dry. But you do not brush wavy hair. You do not brush curly hair. You cannot brush it when it's dry. You can only brush it when it's wet and then you put in your moisturizing products to help it like go into shape. So, I would definitely suggest doing that. I use a tangle teaser. I will link it below if you're not familiar. That's what it looks like. I also use a wet brush. I do change up the brushes quite a bit, but I haven't found that using a wide tooth comb has done anything for me. So tangle teasers are really, really good. And the wet brush is pretty fab as well. I use the paddle brush as well because I've got a, a lot to brush. As I said before, the key is moisture, 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 moisture. I can't emphasize that enough. You just need to put lots of moisturizing things in your hair. If you're looking at my hair and you're like, damn, her hair is so brassy. I know. <laughs> my hair is naturally prone to being super, super brassy and that's even as far as my roots. My dad uh, was ginger, so he's bald now. Um, but yeah, I am blonde from his side of the family and it's definitely got a lot of warm tones in it so brassiness is an issue and I do not have any purple shampoos I can suggest because I hate them all they're all terrible so if I ever find one I will make a video on that too but as far as that I don't have anything to recommend what the rules are for heat styling for me I don't blow dry my hair I never did it makes my hair just not wavy and just poofy and gross and just feels gross I hate it um but I do straighten my hair quite a bit and I do curl my hair quite a bit. Um, I don't have any fantastic tools. I do just use a GHD to straighten it, but it is a solid 15 years old or 16 years old. So um, that's not gross, but you know, I also burned the cable with the thing, but you know, it works, it's fine. Um, and you know, that's good in moderation. Just don't do it all the time. Uh, but a huge, huge thing I have to recommend is tying your hair up when you are 
exercising. I don't tie my hair up when I sleep because I just cannot deal, but exercising, you should definitely have your hair in a bun or a braid. A ponytail is not good for your hair. And if you think of it like swooshing around and smacking off things, it's gonna cause more breakage. And that is a major, major issue for me. So braiding my hair is a big, big thing and uh, putting it in a bun. I used to be a dancer, so buns are my thing. So that is a huge, huge thing for growing out your hair and just protecting it. One thing that you can do while you sleep is use a satin pillowcase. I love mine. I got mine on sale because they're ridiculously overpriced, but I'm pretty sure you could probably get some on eBay or Amazon. And um, I think I pay like seven euro for mine. Okay, which isn't that bad, but like it was, what was it? Like one for 10 or two for 15 or whatever it was. I got a deal, but yeah, I use them all the time, I use them in college, and I do think that has helped um, as far as the frizz at the top of my head, but um, majorly, not a huge thing. So I know I've been talking super quickly and just going straight from one point to the other in this video, the battery in my camera is running out, but I hope this was some help to you. If you have any questions about growing out your hair, uh, do leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Remember guys, that is it for this video, and I will see you in my next one.